Hey guys, welcome to episode 14 of the TST Industries Yamaha R3 Superbike build. In this episode, we're not actually building anything. After last week's two weeks ago test, we decided to tear down the bike, uh, rip the motor apart partially, change the cam degree, do a couple different things, potentially revise the uh, intake ports on the head. So that's getting done right now. So the bike is out of commission and I have nothing else to report really other than I'm gonna change the cam degree, find that stumble that I reported in episode 13, try to fix that and next week, next weekend, we're gonna take it to Southern Track Days at Jennings GP, run around the track for two days, try to find the right configuration for what we need and hopefully bring back some good results and some exciting track footage for you guys to enjoy. In the meantime, since there isn't a lot of building going on, there's not a lot of super bike goodness that I can show you, I wanted to segue sort of into letting you guys know more about our company. TST Industries isn't only the company that builds that one bike that you probably only know us for. I know a lot of you guys probably found us through the video series about the R3, but there's so much more to this company. Some of you guys actually said, why would you do this to an R3? It's so much money to do it to a small bike when you could just buy a bigger bike. Well, check it out. We do do it to bigger bikes. We have been. The whole small bike industry has really taken off for us and that's been ushered in by the release of the R3. Here's our street R3 that we actually engineered, designed and manufacture parts for, for the street guys. We have the fender eliminator, we have uh, a whole host of uh, protection components. We have a carbon fiber front fender controls. Toast Exhaust is one of our premier partners in uh, exhaust, so we offer those. We also offer Yoshimura. We have a nice integrated tail light on that bike that we designed in house, and that's. We have a bunch of products that really sell really well, and, and it shows how popular these bikes are. So this is why we wanted to transition from only doing big bike stuff in the past to trying this new approach that the market basically suggested for us. This R3 has been a great fun machine in its stock form. So we started doing some things to it and then we decided to get the super sport machine in here. It, was, it started out as a stock bike, but we subsequently converted it to a super sport machine it's not as fast as a super bike. It doesn't have as many fancy components. According to our race organization rules to stay within the super stock requirements, we could only modify it so much. So we've done that and we were very successful last year with it. Alex, the pilot of this bike, actually took first place in Moto3 for the season. Uh, he took second place in Super Sport 500, racing against bigger machines and also these R3s because in, in CCS, uh, you can't enter an R3 in a 300 class because they closed that out at 300 cc. So we had to go step up, but still really good results. Racing against 400 and 500 cc machines, he took second for the season and then also second in Superbike 500. So between the Street R3 and our Super Sport R3, we've amassed a bunch of knowledge and had a bunch of fun doing this program. So. Even though we still race the bigger machines, we have uh, the R1 is being raced for our race team. And we also have one guy, Gabe, racing the R6. We have a very comprehensive program here, but that the little machines just, I, I felt like not enough companies are doing really, really special stuff with them. So we wanted to be one of the companies that will forge that new road. And that was my next horizon of having great big fun and spending a bunch of money on it, but it's not all in vain. We've, uh, we've learned a lot from this and already we have requests to, to build a super bike, one of our spec super bikes for customers, not just in the USA, but abroad too. All I can tell you at this point is that it's highly experimental. I would not be willing to sell that to anybody. So what's gonna happen is we will likely start verifying all the pieces of the technology and then start making it available. You can already get uh, board throttle bodies, pistons, uh, rods. A lot of these subcomponents, we already have them. We don't really have them advertised on our website yet. That is coming. 
but you can already get your hands on that stuff. Along with street parts, like you see here on this uh, fine specimen of our street R3, you can now also get some of the goodies that we have for uh, the Super Sport and the Super Bike Machine. Those are really featured on the work section of our website. If you navigate to tstindustries.com and go to shop now, at the bottom of a rollout menu, you'll see the work section. And that's where you'll find parts to outfit either a Super Sport or a Super Bike version of the R3, the R1 and the R6. And we are bringing in more and more parts as time goes on. And we will continue to do that because we are continuing to expand our knowledge of these machines and what parts best suit them. We use them on our race bikes and that is why we sell them to you guys. Some of the components you'll find there are brands like Yoshimura, Gillis Tooling, Olin's. You can find those just about anywhere. But those are the ones we use on our bikes. Whatever we can't find, we make. Uh, so for instance, we decided that after Alex crashed up our Super Sport machine last year and bent the swing arm because we had a spool on here for protection, we decided that that was not the optimal solution for this section of the bike. If you crash pretty hard, this is a pretty thin piece of steel here. Good chances are, if you have a protruding boss here, like a swing arm spool or a spool slider, you will bend that. So we decided to tackle a couple of issues with this whole setup by designing this GP lifter and captive adjuster set. When you go to change these wheels, whether you're on street trim or race trim, spacers fall out and these things, the, the OEM adjusters fall out. It's just a big mess. And trying to get this assembly back together by yourself is, oof, man, I gotta tell you, I, I shed some sweat over this setup. So now we have all of these components captive, only the axle comes out. We have captive spacers, everything holds itself together. And I think I could drop a wheel and, and swap a different wheel onto here in about a minute and a half. There's no protruding elements here. Uh, we do have an optional Delrin piece that covers this area here that serves as a protective element, but it doesn't protrude very far and has a broad surface area in case you do go down to take a hit and distribute that load. So you don't end up bending your swing arm and you can continue riding. Anyway, I don't really wanna ramble on and bore you guys. Like I said, just wanted to give you a little bit of a better idea of what we do here. We're not only about race bikes, we're not only about one size of a motorcycle, we love them all. I've been in the motorcycle industry for about 20 years. Um, I went to engineering school for the purpose of being able to design motorcycle or automotive components at the moment when I first had the idea. But my love of motorcycles really took over and, and this is really where I thrive. And I think our products that we release that are designed by me and my other engineers here really show off how much we love the industry and how much we love what we do. Because it's not only for making money, it's all about enjoying what you do. And I think all of this stuff stands for that. So I want to thank you for watching and hopefully you've watched all the episodes previous to this one. And I hope we got you uh, sticking with us for future episodes. Thanks a lot. Check out tstindustries.com. I'll see you next time.